Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I am going to be playing with a pup in a cup today. I am playing with the not too shabby new release that she had just put out. Jamie says it's back in stock, uh, so you can head over to the shop and check it out. Um, and I am in love with this stamp set. Why, you might ask. Because I am a pug owner. <laughs> Pug owners, you understand. <laughs> so, well, I think any dog or pet owner understands. But pug people, we're a little bit of our own breed. So I am going to talk about um, our pug in just a second. But I want to show you what I'm using here for the coloring. So I am on some Kansan XL watercolor cardstock. And I am using Arteza Twee Markers. Twee Markers, Twi Markers. I don't know about Arteza, but sometimes they make their stuff really hard to say. Um, I don't know which they are, but or how you call them, uh, but I am using those markers. They are water-based. I did a review on them, used them a couple times after that, but I have so many mediums that it's hard for me to um, use a lot of one thing, so I'm constantly putting stuff into rotation. But I grossly underestimated these markers. I had not used them in my review video on watercolor cardstock and shame on me because I have been playing with them all week and they're really, really fun. So I use them on the Bristol because you have to use something where you can get the blend and get them to move, but they're a felt tip brush marker. So they're not like the real brush pens that are like real paint brushes. These are a felt tip, so it's more firm. Um, but on the Bristol Smooth, they will pill the paper um, pretty much on the second go. You have to be very careful. You can do it, but if it's better to use these on Bristol Smooth with small images that you're coloring. Something large like this, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's just too much water. So, um, but on here, I'm using a four color blend for that purple cup. And this is the first go. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you go back and do it a second time um, over the first coat. But they're they're great. I think even on this large image like this, I got a great blend. But on smaller images, it's even more fantastic. So I'm going to let you in on a little upcoming video. I ordered the Kareen markers or Karen markers that are like the hottest trend out on the market right now. And... I gotta tell you, <laughs> that one hurt a little bit because they're pricey and you know me and I don't get down like that. So here's my logic. And I ask that you withhold judgment if possible. Uh, I bought them to prove that I didn't need them. <laughs> It's true. I'm just going to be, this is my safe space right here. I could be completely honest with all of you. Um, but I did. I bought them so that I can prove that I didn't need them. Um, it's terrible to say that out loud. But because I really feel like they're just like all these other water brush markers. And so I was like, let me see. This is me. I'm like, prove it to me. So I picked them up and I'm going to compare them to um, these Twee markers to Tombow's. Uh, Real Brush Prens from Arte Arteza and from, um, what's the other brand? The Clean Clear Color Real Brush. Zigs. They're called Zigs. <laughs> That's all they're called. Those called Zigs. Anyway, those and then also Gen Crafts. And those are like a Real Brush Pen as well, just a different brand. So I'm kind of going to be, you know, letting us know that these are pretty much all the same. But what are you looking for, I guess? You know, I, I suppose there's going to be some differences in them. Just as I do my alcohol marker reviews, there's always something different. The barrel, uh, maybe the pigment, the saturation, things like that. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. But of course, with shipping, it's going to take a little bit for them to get here. I would say within a month, you should see that video post. Okay, so I didn't even talk about the coloring whatsoever in this video, so I apologize for that. But I basically am putting down my blends first with the markers, and then I'm pulling it out with the water brush. I would recommend probably use a brush and dip it in water to get it just damp enough, and not necessarily a water barrel brush like this, unless you're really comfortable with them, because a lot of water can kind of come out. I'm going to come back to that those images in just a second. But I'm going to be doing a lot of paper piecing today because I love paper piecing. It's one of my favorite techniques and I don't do it enough. It saves a lot of time. It You can add any 
pattern paper that you have. So you're using up pattern paper, you don't have to color, it's just fun. I really enjoy this technique. So what that means if, it, if you're new to paper piecing, it means that you're stamping your images onto a pattern paper of your choice, and then you're gonna cut out the piece that you want to just be that part of the image. So right here, I cut out the middle of that coffee cup with the bow tie. Um, so or the bow. So that's paper piecing. And then you're just going to place it on your project. Um, right here I wanted to show you on the left I did two coats of this coloring and on the right I did just one. So you can see even with the one you can get a beautiful blend but the two is a little bit of a wow factor. Um, so you're really getting that beautiful dark dimension on your project. And that's paper piecing back to that. So you can kind of see how that's going to come together. So I'll come back to the grounding here. I decided to go with a different color than gray. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my background right now. I am holding down my cardstock on this craft mat with a piece of masking paper doubled up on itself. That's how it's not moving. And then I'm taping down my stencil here. So this stencil, I believe, is from MFT. I'm going to use some Stormy Sky. Uh, first to get down a little bit of color. Then I'm going to use this black soot right around the edges. It gives me that shadow look that I love and I just really am pleased with the end result of that. I wanted my background to be definitely noticeable but go with the color theme. I thought brown was going to be too too much of a different kind of uh, tone for the card so that's why I went with the gray. Peeling off that mask is like magic. I'm using rock, paper, scissors, removable sticker label paper for my masking. Uh, it's one of my favorites. You can buy it in a big box and you'll have it for the rest of your days. Now I'm going to go back in with this really light blue color. Again, still the, using the Twi markers. And I'm going to pull this out with the water brush. I was so impressed with how easy this these markers move on watercolor cardstock. Now, not all watercolor cardstock is made the same. So be on the lookout for one of those review videos as well um, because it is, and I, I'm not going to spoil it, but a little hint, you'll find out about the watercolor card stock review in my watercolor marker review video. <laughs> okay. You probably are, all are like, Mary, no one cares. Move on. Um, so I'm going to then put my start putting my pieces together. I did pop up my centerpiece of my cup and the bow right in that little pup's hair. Didn't even get to talk about my dog. Oh god, this just went by too quick. So, um my our dog his name was Bo. I had him I got him when I was 25 and uh we lost him about 3 years ago uh from some medical issues that he had and he was a well-traveled pug, well-loved. He was all I'm putting pictures up here on the side so you could see as I talk about him. Um, just the most stubborn and self-consumed dog ever, but just the sweetest thing because all he ever wanted was to be loved. And why? Because that had something to do with him. <laughs> Any other things he did not care <laughs> about. Uh, I got a little depressed when I had Adia uh, and then snapped out of it, realized she wasn't going anywhere, and then he came back to normal. Uh, but he ne was never a protective dog, I just didn't, you know, he just decided one day he would share space with her. That's how he worked. But I loved him dearly and he was my best little buddy. I, um, oh, back to the card here. I picked these up because I wanted to see what they were all about. I saw them on Amazon. They're little gems that you use for nail art. And um, I just think they're just super cute. And so I'm going to put those um, one right in the center of my bow here. All right. So anyway, yeah, he, I remember walking around England with him because I, took him to England with me and to Hawaii, which if you've ever gone overseas with a pet, oh my gosh, you understand my pain. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he had a little slicker for him and everything. <laughs> okay, so on the card here, I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish off some of these cards. So these are some fun little uh, additions you can do at the end of your cards. Um, I didn't have a layout yet for this little guy, uh, but this is a cutie patootie little pug here as well. But I am going to put him in a frothy frappuccino. And how I'm going to do that is use my snow marker. So my snow marker is one of my most favorite embellishments because you can use it for so many things. So obviously it's in the name, so snow. And I'm just showing you here as it puffs up because you heat it and it puffs up. But snow, um, poodle's fur, frappuccinos, beer foam, um, wave top, like an ocean, the wave tops, so many things. Love a, a snow marker. 
So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go in with my white gel pen here. This is a Signo Uniball gel pen, and I'm going to clean up the eyes. I had a little bit of the ink go into the white part of the eye. And then I'm going to take my Sakura Black Jelly Roll Pen, which is phenomenal for these really, these accent pieces that you want on your cards. So here I'll show you up close. You can see it. It's so cute, and I love it. Little wet nose. I'm going to stamp this out with a little hello that comes lots and lots of sentiments in this set. It's really, really cute, and I love how big this image is. I am a big image kind of gal. Like, that is so much fun for me to color. So I tend to gravitate towards those. I'm gonna take a white gel pen for just some highlights here, and that will do it for the three of my pugs in cups. Pup in a cup. <laughs> I hope you had fun with me today. I had a blast playing with these cards, of course, because of my affection for pugs, but also because it's just so darn cute. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll list what I used below in the description box so you can check that out. Don't forget to hit subscribe and follow me on other forums so we can connect outside of YouTube. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.